Good afternoon, everyone. Although it says Heckscher Museum, my name is Joy Wiener. I'm Director of Education and Public Programs at the Heckscher Museum of Art. And it is uh, an honor to be here today on this very special day, um, which I guess we'll talk about in a, in a minute or two. And um, I'm thrilled that so many of you have taken time out to join us today. It will be a wonderful afternoon. Uh, before we get going, just a few housekeeping rules that make everything uh, easier and clear. Uh, if you are not speaking, please stay muted during the presentation. Um, we highly recommend that everyone switch to speaker view. You will find the view up in the right top hand corner. And that way, whoever is speaking will be large on the screen and it will be excellent to be viewing the studio on a larger view. So make sure that you can find that. And um, what we hope to have happen today is kind of a, um, a somewhat fluid conversation with both Megan and Scott, Connie's uh, daughter and son-in-law, and they will be chatting with us. And from time to time, Carly and I will uh, be asking them questions, speaking with them. We also invite uh, you, if you would like to, um, you, if you have a question, you can use the raise hand feature. If you are on your laptop, it, you will find that under reactions or under participants. So you might wanna take a look and see if you can locate the raise hand. It's a little, a little hand image. Um, when I see that, uh, when Megan or Scott are done speaking about a particular Megan, work of art, Megan. I, will, um, I will call upon you to ask whatever questions you may have. Okay. You can also ask questions in the chat at the middle of the bottom. Um, if you do that, those questions, or as many as we can, will be answered following the tour during our Q and A. Um, mm -hmm. Does anybody does anybody have any questions? Yes. <laughs> what? What's the question? Well, I wanted to ask something about her earlier work. Okay, well, yes. give us just just yes. let it. We'll let us get into it, and then your question may be answered before before you even ask it, or you can ask it along the way. But we'll get started. We'll get started first. Okay. Okay. Very well. All right. So I have a question. Will yes. Connie be uh, on the call today? I do believe that she will be here for uh, a moment for us. Wonderful. We have a surprise, an old friend that's uh, on the call. Excellent. excellent. Okay. And then, um, so uh, someone is sharing their screen. Yes, let's just have yeah, it. Yeah, you're screen sharing. I'm messing up everything here. No, Stop. no, it's fine. Uh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's funny because actually I'm going to share my screen now. Um, hi, my name is Carly Wurzelbacher. I am the curator of the Heckscher Museum of Art. Um, happy to be here with you today. And um, I am going to share my screen so that I can briefly introduce Connie Fox and her work. And then I will introduce Megan and Scott who are taking us through the rest of the program. Oh, I'm missing it. Okay. Okay. So um, we are holding this virtual studio tour today on the occasion of an exhibition that is physically on view at the Heckscher Museum called Connie Fox, the Sammy's Beach Series. Um, many of you, I think, know Connie, uh, but I would like to introduce her anyway for those of you who don't. Um, so Sammy, the Sammy's Beach Series is a remarkable recent achievement by Connie Fox 
whose uh, career spans more than seven decades, which is what we'll be speaking about today. Connie Fox was born in Fowler, Colorado on this day in 1925. So this is her 96th birthday that we are celebrating with her today. Um, in the 1950s, Connie Fox attended graduate school and then taught at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. And there she met artists Elaine de Kooning and Robert Dash, who would later lure her to Long Island. Um, Connie Fox has lived in East Hampton's Northwest Woods for the last 40 years. Um, and her work is held in many museum collections, including the Albright Knox Art Gallery in Buffalo, New York, the Brooklyn Museum, the Museum of Art at the University of Lynchburg in Virginia, which very kindly lent their painting Sammy's Beach II to the museum. Um, uh, also the Guildhall Museum, the Parish Art Museum, and the Santa Barbara Museum of Art in California. Um, and so to just tell you a bit about the Sammy's Beach series before we dive into today's program, um, Connie's recent Sammy's Beach series, uh, she started painting in 2007 um, and worked on the series through 2014. And the series is made up of large scale paintings and also works on paper that were inspired by uh, 30 decades, sorry, not 30 decades, <laughs> 30 years of near daily visits to um, Sammy's Beach, which I'm showing you on the map here. Um, it's a tidal bay beach um, between Three Mile Harbor and Gardner's Bay on the east end of Long Island. And if you haven't been there, uh, here are just a few mm -hmm. images of what this looks like. Uh, probably the greatest uh, research trip I've gotten to go on is to go to the beach several times <laughs> in preparation for this show. Um, and to give you a sense of the paintings, if you're not familiar, this is uh, Sammy's Beach One uh, from 2007, a very large, um, massive painting currently on view at the museum. Um, this is Sammy's Beach Three on loan to the museum um, and Sammy's Beach Four. Um, let's see. And then I have these images, which we can share later in the program, but uh, this is another one of Connie's studios, which we'll be talking about um, and an image of Connie. Uh, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And I would like to introduce... Um, Megan and Scott. And Joy, are they, um, uh, me, so Megan and Scott, are you? They uh, should be the large view right now. Right. Hi. Hi. Uh, are you, do you have your, your view on speaker view? Let's see. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, there we are. Okay, great. Um, so I am, again, many of you may know Megan and Scott, um, some of you may not. So um, Megan Chasky, who is going to be leading us around today, is the daughter of painter Connie Fox, and she is a poet, a musician, and a yoga therapies practitioner who has been teaching in all of these fields for decades. Um, and we'll be hearing more about the connections between Megan's work and Connie's work throughout the program today. Um, and Megan is joined by her husband, Scott Chasky, um, who is a poet, a farmer, and an educator. And Megan and Scott were both a huge help, as was Connie, in, um, in enabling us to realize the Sammy's Beach Series exhibition at the museum. So we really thank you for all of your help and thank you for hosting us today. So we'll turn it over to you. Hello, welcome. And I'd like to uh, now turn this over to Connie, who is here. So we can say a happy birthday to Connie. Happy birthday. Hi, Connie. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hi, Connie. Happy birthday, Connie, from Jolin. Happy Jerry. birthday. Happy birthday, Connie, from Jerry. Love you. <laughs> Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy, Happy birthday from Ellen and Steve! <laughs> Happy birthday, Connie! Love you from Sherry. Ready? 
Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Connie, Connie from Jade and Steven. <laughs> Happy birthday from Peter and Elizabeth. In Toronto, Peter Toronto. and Elizabeth from Lucendo. <laughs> Happy birthday from Roz and James in Shelter Island. Nice. Yes, happy birthday. Leave it here from Sag Arbor. Nice. <laughs> All right, we'll be able to say hello to her again. Um, and I just wanted you to, to see that she's here witnessing and uh, so happy that this is happening on her birthday, her 96th birthday. And uh, welcome to Connie's studio here in East Hampton, New York. And uh, what I'd like to do is start off by panning around the studio and then we'll uh, move into looking at the paintings that we've hung to represent the different, different decades. And uh, so when you come into the studio, you enter through this door that comes from the main part of the house. That's the, the smaller door. The double doors uh, to the side go out to the deck. And uh, so when you come in that door, the first thing you see on your right is this wall, which um, normally has a lot of paintings stacked up against it because the painting wall that she uh, uses most for her large paintings is here. So when you enter that door, it would be on your right. And then you'll see her painting table with her paints. And she has this great method to have the different colors in these containers with the names of the colors written on the lids facing out. Um, we'll talk more about her materials later on. Then here where you see the, the smaller paintings and the one resting on the stool are the ones she's working on currently. And then, so this is another painting wall what? here. Just undo that. Oh, I love that one. And as we continue round, You'll see there are stacks where uh, she stores her smaller paintings and works on paper. There's Connie again. And you can see that uh, where she's sitting, above where she's sitting is a loft. And, um, and below the loft is where she has her desk and where she likes to sit and draw and paint so that she can be in the sun coming in through those beautiful southern facing windows. So we'll continue around here, beautiful ficus tree here. And then the steps going up to the loft. And then you'll see again those double doors that lead out to the deck. So that's the full pathway around the studio. I'm going to turn it around back again because we have this on a music stand. And now we're going to talk about the paintings. Uh, so uh, Connie came to visit Elaine de Kooning uh, here in uh, East Hampton before she lived here. And she and Elaine were looking around the neighborhood and they noticed a house for sale. <sighs> And so Connie decided to buy the house. And uh, as they were looking at the house, Connie said, so where would I paint? Where, where would my studio be? And Elaine said, the whole house will be your studio. <laughs> well, the story of how this studio got built because this did not exist uh, when that house was uh, first built was um, Scott and I uh, went to Pittsburgh to stay with my mother in Swickley outside of Pittsburgh. And um, yes, 
And uh, Scott was helping build some construction boxes and things for a show she was having. And we actually went, and it would be helpful if people could mute. It would be helpful if people could mute. Thank you. 1978. 1978. And so um, we went to help her move from Pittsburgh to here, to East Hampton. And so we uh, loaded up all of her belongings. She's laughing. I'll show you as she's hearing this story. So you can see that it's not traumatic. It's just a story. <laughs> and uh, we loaded up all of our belongings in a U-Haul van, including all of her paintings. And uh, we were getting ready to drive here. And the night before, someone stole the U-Haul van and drove it at a distance and couldn't get in because of a lock. And so they set it on fire. And long story short, uh, she, she uh, rescued most of the paintings and one of them you'll see in the tour. And uh, the best part about all of this was that her insurance covered it and she was able to build this studio. So that was the silver lining of that story. The phoenix rises out of the yes. ashes. <laughs> so uh, that picture that Carly showed earlier of uh, Volvo in front of the railway station was her studio in Swickley, Pennsylvania, it was in the railway station. And it was owned by Dee Dee George, her dear friend. And they shared it as a painting studio. Here's the picture coming up again. And it was such an amazing place for a studio because it was, it had very large ceilings in the entryway and then several uh, rooms, waiting rooms on the sides. And they each had a place to paint, including Dee Dee had um, glass making equipment. And then you'll see on the left, there is Connie holding one of her colored Xeroxes, which she started experimenting with at the time because the colored Xerox machine was just invented. And she loved the saturated color that they created. And she would use these the uh, common uh, tools and uh, things from construction. These this, giant This hooks, is a virtual these. tour right now. Everybody's paying $10 for it. I if you could please mute, it would be really well, I helpful. To, to join too. No, I'm Excuse me, can you phone. please mute? Of course. It's internet. You what can you go about? down into the lower left hand yeah, corner of who's, your who's screen the, who's the and press mute. Hi, everybody. So just a reminder to please mute yourself so that we can hear Megan and Scott. That's Carly. You hear her yeah, voice yeah. in the background? Helen, Carly. is that you? Helen? Helen? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah mute yourself. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks. So um, these are examples of the color Xeroxes that she did. She would try them in different uh, saturations, different uh, hues. And uh, it was a great hit with everyone. So this is an example of some of the other things that she experimented with. And that, okay, great. So now we're going to, um, Oh, so I just wanted to add too that uh, she was born in Colorado, in Fowler, Colorado, and there are a number of people here representing the family in Fowler, which is awesome. And then she went to art school in LA in the late 40s. And one of the things she did when she was in LA was her first job was painting uh, on hand painted ties. So the silk ties would go by on a conveyor belt and she would add some little different, um, she's <laughs> laughing remembering this, um, some little aspect of the scene on the 
tie. And uh, so that's a, a favorite memory of hers that she likes to share about working in the hand-painted tie factory. And then after um, that, in 1950, she took a bike trip through Europe. Right, so Connie, um, Connie and two friends, uh, two female friends uh, traveled for eight months, uh, a thousand miles uh, through, through Europe. And uh, it was 1950, so uh, they actually went through Germany and uh, they saw um, you know, reconstruction um, going on and obviously a, a lot of um, devastation from, from the war. Um, but uh, they traveled for eight months and a thousand miles and uh, they drew and they took photos and uh, obviously this had a tremendous influence on her because they saw a lot of art. And you can see in some of her paintings, we don't have them up here, but you see Italian uh, landscapes in the corner of the, uh, some of her paintings. So then she went to graduate school in New Mexico, and that's where she met Bob Dash and Elaine de Kooning. And the story is that Elaine danced with me when I was one year old. And, uh, and in this very studio, we had a blessing ceremony for our son, and Elaine was the godmother and she danced with our son and he was like six months old. So we continued the tradition. And so now I am going to um, take you to a painting. a painting. And please excuse the, <laughs> the makeshift um, video viewing. Okay, so first we see, did you get the clipboard? We see this painting, which is Crows in Red Trees from 1954. I'm gonna stop here. Hopefully that's a good view. And Scott's going to talk to you about this painting. This was painted when we lived in New Mexico. We lived in Tejeras in the mountains near Albuquerque. And we needed to move from Tejeras to Corrales because a cement factory was built nearby. And, uh, but it was a beautiful place to go to in Corrales. They built a, an adobe house with Japanese influences. So. So this painting, um, uh, 1954, the year that uh, Connie and Blair were married, as a matter of fact, in New Mexico, Megan and, and Brian's uh, dad. And um, this painting was chosen for a show um, in Lynchburg, Virginia, uh, just about a year and a half ago. And as we were packing it up, I noticed a little tiny piece of writing in the corner. So the, the larger writing is crows and red trees. However, the first title for the, for, you know, written in this little corner that we just discovered was what is passing or passing or what is past or passing or to come, which is from a W.B. Yeats poem, a great poem, Sailing to Byzantium. Once out of nature shall never take my bodily form from any natural thing. Well, anyhow, it ends with <laughs> what is past or passing or to come. And so I wanted to mention that because literature has had an incredible influence on Connie uh, for her whole painting career. And, and look at that, there's evidence of it in 1954. Also, I have to mention that crows are her favorite totem animal. So they've been that for a long time. We're passing the baton. Yes. Okay. Um, Good. There you go. So this painting, what was the date of this one again? 1964. 1964. There you go. 
And this is called Steps Shell Moon Face. And this was a painting that was actually in the fire. And so some of the dark around the edges is um, a little bit of staining from the soot, but it actually, I, don't, I think it kind of goes with the painting. There we are. So this is uh, the painting that I used on the cover of my collected poems. And you'll notice that I did do a little change. I made the uh, fruits on the tree yellow. And then that was temporary. So now the original painting, you can see they have black fruits. So this is my collected poems and the stories of my life and all the various places we've lived. And I'd like to read to you from this book. I was born at the height of summer in New Mexico in 1956. So I love the heat of that season and the large expanse of, expanse of sky and mountains in the clear light. At that time, my parents, Blair Boyd and Connie Fox, who kept her maiden name as her painting name, had a house in Tejeras in the Sandia Mountains, east of Albuquerque. Following that, we moved to Corrales by the Rio Grande River, where my brother Brian was born. For five years, starting when I was seven, we spent the school months in Berkeley, California, and took the train back and forth to New Mexico each summer until I was 12. That year, my parents separated, which marked a great transition time for me. The way I work on my poems is similar to the way my mother has always immersed herself in her painting intuitively, part wrestling, part dance. No matter where we lived or what form our fa family situation took, my mother's painting was always her lodestar as she navigated her life. And this gave me an unwavering sense of the artistic process as the way to tap into the underlying life force throughout life's inevitable changes. I've also been deeply influenced by visual imagery through witnessing my mother's painting process as it evolved into abstract expressionism from her earlier imaginational landscapes. Landscape in abstract form has played a strong role in my mother's art all through her life. Whether we lived in California, New Mexico, Denmark, or on Long Island, and it has helped us both build a sense of place. She has titled several of her paintings with lines from my poems, such as your lamp far back between the trees, I grow wings where no one can see, and this room is wrinkled with light. And uh, you'll see a couple of poems with titles from my poems later on in the tour. And let's see. I'd like to read you the poem that I wrote for my mother. I don't know what's happening. There's some kind of screen share. <laughs> well, there we are. For my mother, Connie Fox, on your birthday, March 6th, 1983. So that would be when she was living here in Long Island. Uh, no, would have been when we were in England. We were in England. She we was England. here. She, she was, was here. here. We were in England. The land unloosed, awash beneath a strict sky. That earth whose dear markings, there, the mud cracked riverbed, specific cottonwoods, or here, lichened oaks at the edge of winter sea. As in your homeland, black cattle scattered on a white range. Unbend the spine of collected circles. Move that moment then into this primal space as if to touch finger to heart, a complicated purity of inner sight brought perhaps in a difficult moment 
to the sight of a single crow perched just inside the supreme height of a tree. And there you see <laughs> crows and red trees again. <laughs> All right. Can we bring the stand? I'll have to do it. Okay, we're um, carrying the laptop around. Hopefully you have a good view. So this, let's see, get this lined up nicely. This one is called Five Rainbows. And what's the date on this one again? Uh, 74, 1974. 1974. So this is an example from the 70s. Now, what's interesting is we were living in Sewickley and in uh, 1972, uh, Connie took Brian and me to Denmark for a year in Denmark, which was an amazing experience. We went to stay at New Experimental College, it, which was part of a, a whole um, network of experimental higher education institutions. And we lived in an old farm area with just surrounded by uh, rolling fields. And because we were there in the winter time, they were all covered with snow. So you can imagine a landscape with just uh, vast fields of snow. And every now and then a Viking burial mound would um, push up through the middle of a field where the farmers just mowed around it. And when she was there, and I'm going to just fast forward over to this painting and I'll come back to Five Rainbows. This painting was painted in Denmark and she painted on pillow ticking, which is the fabric that they use for pillows and duvets so that the, um, it's very tightly woven so the feathers don't come through. And she found it was a really nice material to paint on. Um, and so she didn't have to gesso it and she could also just pin it to the wall. And so she was able to roll those paintings up and bring them back. So you can see in this one, it's got the aspect of the landscape, but you'll see that in the sky, there is this imaginational, uh, you know, extra addition of this space with the rainbow colors around it. And in Denmark, she started to uh, meditate. And one of the things I've noticed in my life watching her painting evolve is that when she started to meditate, she started using more color. And she also was doing this, uh, adding things to the sky because the landscape was just so <clears throat> vast and white with all the snow she started to add these things to the sky. So now I'm going to bring you back to this uh, painting, which is from 1974. And you can see that there is that um, imagination of the rainbows and starting to have other elements coming into the space of the painting. And at this point, I um, would like to open it up if there were any questions about the ones we've just seen before I go on, because then we're going to get into the decade, uh, the decades of the 80s. Maybe I should read my poem. Oh, yeah. So Scott's going to read a poem that's related to a painting from this time. All right. So um, it is not, this poem is called The Painting. It is not this painting. However, many people on this uh, call know that there are a lot of paintings in this house and we were limited in what we could hang up. So anyhow, there are, this one is a cousin of the one that I'm, I'm reading the poem about. It's called The Painting and it begins with an epigram uh, by the 13th century Zen master, Master Dogen. Flowers are innocently fondled by the wind and birds trust freely to time. These are feats of giving. Indeed, by reason of being originally gifted with the power of giving, 
one's present self came into being. The painting, and it's about a gift. The morning her daughter gave birth to a daughter, she came to the door, a formal visit with a gift of herself. See the New Mexican mountains where she lived with her first child and her wild blood changed her conception into beautiful girl. She paints pinnacles and rainbows, place for wide water to fall and flow. If the moon rises, it cradles each peak with silver and sets an imagined blue stone. The powerful white tornado moves through snow crowns to name the distance as near. This is paint on paper, part of herself. With her body and brush clouds part, the moon carries away the essential necessary mask of art like surface of rivers glides over an older face and selfless empties into a mother water. Beautiful. It's great to hear that poem with that painting next to you. Amazing. Maybe we could do the, um, the stand now. Yeah. Um, so did anyone want to raise your hand and ask a question at this point, or um, we can keep learning from Megan and Scott? Okay, so I see one hand. Um, Ellen? Hi. Hi, Connie. Hi, everybody. Hi, Megan. Hi. Hi. Uh, this is such a joy. <laughs> such a feast of poetry and a feast of Connie's early work. Uh, I have a question. Are these early pieces oil? Mm. All right, um, yeah, that's a good question. question. Um, look, oh, this is nice. I can just turn back to this. The, um, she painted in oil in, uh, in New Mexico. And then at a certain point, she, uh, had you know toxic reaction to oil paints and also she was working with epoxy when she was uh making more of sculptural kind of pieces and so she chose to ch move to acrylic paints and that made uh, a big difference in her work because of uh, the way the paint goes on as you know ellen as a as a painter and also the range of colors so she moved to acrylics and then um, recently she is uh, using some uh, paints that are made from the pigments and natural like uh, walnut oil, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And her caregiver Shelly is mixing those paints for her and you'll see some of these paintings later on. Thank you, that's fabulous, thank you. You're welcome. There's uh, some sunlight right on that painting. That's interesting. So this one is uh, called Not the Man, Not the Tornado from uh, 1985. And I'm just going to move this back a little bit so you can see. Can you help me move it back? So you can see the whole painting. There we go. You can see it's a very large painting. And one of the uh, things that I wanna mention about this painting is that you can see that red spiral going over uh, around that white obelisk. And, um, and what year was that? 19... 1989. 1989, Scott's my historian. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Connie and Bill King, her late husband, the sculptor Bill King, uh, had a home show at the Ruth Barrett Gallery in East Hampton, where they created an amazing uh, a range of furniture. They made four poster bed where she painted the headboard and the footboard. And, um, and also, oh, yeah, yes, yeah, and a wardrobe and uh, chairs and a t and table with chairs and including, let's see if you can, uh, I'll show it to you later. There's a rug. I could hold it up. Let me hold it up. I think I can just do this. This rug here, 
which is painted on canvas. There it is. And uh, Scott and I helped with this home show. We, um, we helped build things and I hemmed the edge of this rug. And I also sewed, no, it's okay there. And I also sewed for the four poster bed, which had columns that went up on each side of each corner of the bed out of PV, white PVC pipe. And my mother had me sew red velvet tubes that were stuffed. So they were three dimensional. They were beautiful. They were a lot of work <laughs> to <laughs> sew that red. <laughs> She's laughing, remembering this. The, sewing the red velvet and then stuffing them. So it looked just like this in the um, painting. Beautiful. And then when we get round to the other painting wall, you'll see the rocking chair that Connie designed that was for that show. Now this painting is titled, Not the Man, Not the Tornado. And we made a discovery. We were saying, Scott and I, that this was titled after a line from a poem of mine. And um, what's interesting is that we went uh, looking for the painting, uh, the poem so that I could read it to you. And actually the line is not the man, not the thunder, but it's great that she made it, not the man, not the tornado. <laughs> because in several of her paintings, she has the imagery of the tornado. Um, and in planning this whole tour, I was thinking about that title, Not the Man, Not the Tornado. And I had this insight <laughs> that when we moved from California to Pittsburgh, and, um, and so I left, uh, uh, Berkeley in a school and a teacher at the time that I really loved. And uh, so I realized when I wrote, when, when I thought that the line was not the man, not the tornado, that I was saying, not the man that we were moving to Swickley, Pennsylvania for, <laughs> and not the tornado. <laughs> anyway, you can see where that came from in my background. And um, I'm going to read you the poem, The Gargoyles Keep. Not the man, not the thunder that glance against marble. It may be the ceaseless shuffle of wings and wind in the parapet, never rising to the moving longing of storm, never disturbed by throbs turned out from the bell's wide bowl. The stone content to have no voice of its own, once in the season may have a syllable forced inward into the narrow chamber by a sudden gasped gust at the right angle, a whistle drawn inward against the teeth that then sends the breath trembling down the length like a tremor in the earth. The birds only turn their heads towards the sound and gentle it, beaks against sandstone angels to drink in the power of flight with little quick white palpitations of their throats. And I would just like to say that um, because uh, that was based on uh, churches that we saw in uh, England, but most likely in France, uh, I, I feel that those are influences that my mother also had uh, from her journey through Europe. And now we are going to move around. And here are the paintings that she's working on currently. Yeah, let's just move the whole thing. Excuse the jiggle. <laughs> yes. Um, so these are the ones that she's working on currently, these smaller ones, with those uh, homemade paints made from pigments and walnut oil. And she sits here on a stool and uh, also over under the loft. She likes to paint in both those places. You can see on the um, 
left there, there was a place where she did have a vent at one point when she was trying to use the acrylic paint still and wanted to make sure that there was ventilation, but now she's moved to these kind of paints. So the paintings in the studio that we've chosen range from 1954 to 2021. Amazing. All right, so now we have to move back again to be able to see this big painting. Very nice. <laughs> okay, and this painting is from 1995. And the title is I Sense the Winds That Are Coming. And that again is a line from one of my poems. And I think it's appropriate to um, be looking at this painting also because uh, Connie always says that it's windy on her birthday because <laughs> it's windy in March, but uh, today is actually a very still day, but we've had a lot of wind recently. <laughs> and um, yes, so you can see in this painting, uh, you can start to see the uh, changes in the decades. It was really fun finding paintings from each of the decades and seeing how they evolved and how they progressed. And you can see these um, floating shapes in the center. And she started to do more of that, you know, whether it was like a bowler hat or some other shape that was um, implied, because often she'll say, it's not a hat. It may look like a hat, <laughs> but it's not a hat. And these are not balls. They may look like balls, but they are not balls. Correct? She's and, and incorrect. I'm going to, since we're talking about influences, I'm going to mention that you may think you see stars, but those aren't stars, despite the fact that Connie was very familiar with the work of Duchamp, who famously had a star that shape, um, in, uh, you shaved. know, in, in was the, shaved around, shaved around in, in his head. Um, and, and so uh, I, I, I want to mention something about the influences uh, in the late 40s, uh, when Connie was in LA, uh, she first saw the work of the Surrealists and, and that meant a lot to her. But perhaps more than actual artists, she's always said that she was really influenced at that time by the films of Cocteau and Fellini. Um, so th that, that fits into the influences for Connie Fox. Um, but also, you can go back and trace things when you find it here and there. But I also want to um, recall the sentence of a, a critic named Garrett Henry, who said of her paintings, there's nothing quite like a fox. <laughs> All right. You can also see, I th um, you know, there are excellent um, articles uh, in her catalogs that, that you can go back and uh, witness uh, a lot of um, insight. But I would like to mention that in this one, the plane of the painting really changes here in the 90s. All right, now we're going to move to, let's move it over so we can see it more directly. Good. <laughs> and this one is called Paris Air from 2009. And uh, what's interesting is that um, we were talking about the, the uh, grid that is showing up in some of her later paintings, right? right. And uh, one of the interesting things is that uh, she often starts with a grid, right? And then you paint over the top of the grid. You didn't know. <laughs> yes. And sometimes it gets covered up and sometimes it gets incorporated into the painting, such as in this one. But what's interesting is that, and um, 
there's also, is that Duchamp? Yeah. Uh, Duchamp had a piece, and uh, some of you may know about it, which was a jar of air named uh, L'Air well, de Paris. L'Air de Paris. And this is Paris Air. And this is Paris Air, <laughs> and she loves Duchamp. <laughs> so we think there's another literary or artistic reference there. And also the beautiful um, railway station in Paris, all glass. So there are some references to that. And the grid, what's also interesting in the Heckscher show is that they have some grid drawings uh, that are part of the Sammy's Beach series. And I remember as a child, um, Connie taking uh, Brian and me to see exhibits in New York and going to see Mondrian especially, I remember that, and how different his paintings were from the paintings you were doing, but it's interesting when the grid comes in. Yes, I was also wondering, and I'm going to ask this of you because I haven't had a chance to ask you, um, yeah. If, when you were in art school, did you um, learn to uh, copy um, paintings from the classics by making a grid? Because I know that is a, a, a technique that they use when teaching art, is to lay out a grid to be able to copy it. Did you ever do that in art school? Yes, but they were done at the beginning of the period. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Not covered the up. End. Not the end. So <laughs> your grids happen at the end? Yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And also, do you feel like when you make the grid, does it help you to um, determine the space of the painting? Uh, I don't think so. No? No, it's funny. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, you've done it in so many different ways that it probably worked in different ways each time. It, it like an experiment, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. And um, then I'd just like to show you outside and then we'll open it up for questions because I just want to show you what it looks like outside. And some of you have been to Long Island so you know what it looks like, but. And there are all these sculptures of Bill King's in the yard. And I am going to step over here and see if I can take you to see the outside of Connie's studio. And there are more sculptures. And there in the distance, I think you can see it, is Bill's studio. Yes. So he had a separate studio there. And then those are the wonderful large windows on the side of her studio. I'm gonna take you back in. And I just wanted to show you this space here where she sits and draws. And that is where the picture was taken for the announcement of this tour and also where she sits for Zazen. And with that, we can go back. Oh, I should show you these. Self as Colette and Max Beckman. Those are her drawings. And the chair. And the chair. 
We need to show you the chair. This is the chair that Connie designed. A rocking chair. Gotta try it out. <laughs> and this was in the home show. Okay, I've got my place. <laughs> <laughs> I have to show you what it looks like from the side. It's just such an elegant design. Do you have the cords, Scott? <laughs> There you see the design of the chair, still rocking. Beautiful. Megan, did she actually uh, build the chair? No, she had it built. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh no. oh no. And is that leather on the? No, that is um, plywood, you know, a good quality plywood. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is metal. Mm -hmm. It's metal. Yep. Aluminum. Yeah. All right. So thank you. Thanks. That was that was awesome. I think we've all been holding in our questions and observations. Um, <laughs> and also, you kind of read our minds. Some of the questions on the chat you've answered. <laughs> So this is a great time to um, open it up and, and hear from the audience if there are any other questions, if you wanna um, see any paintings again and um, or say hi to Connie again. Hi, Connie. This is Andy Schloss. This is Andy Floss. Hi, Andy. Hi, Megan. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I've been meaning to get in touch with you since you since you called and emailed, mm -hmm. and uh, it's so amazing. And I so I really I look forward to um, catching up. And I would love uh, to. Yeah, <laughs> just just give people a little sense of how you know Connie. Um, well, Connie was my teacher in uh, at Carnegie Mellon, and. Um, I left Carnegie Mellon in the middle and went to NEC, to, um, to Denmark. And um, I was there for two years and you guys came my second year, I believe. Um, and um, Connie was, is, saved me, was a um, wonderful influence for me. Um, one thing I wanted to ask is, I worked in that studio in um, Swickley at the train station because of um, Connie's compromised immune system. I casted the polyurethane masks that she was making at that time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> and, oh, yes. And, and they were in the center of these giant flower paintings. Yes. Did any of them make it through? Yes. Oh, they were amazing paintings. Yes. Right, and I also remember living in your house for the summer after we returned from Denmark and running a restaurant in Sewickley, uh, like a sandwich shop. <laughs> oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> yep. like this and, um, and I think I kicked you out of your bedroom, Megan. I think I lived in your bedroom for the, for the summer. Oh, that is so funny. I don't remember that part. <laughs> well, I am eternally grateful to you. And this is, everyone's going to witness this because we haven't talked so, uh, in all these years. And no. I was, because Scott and I were getting out these paintings from the different decades to get ready for this um, tour. Uh, and so I was talking about our time in Denmark and I mentioned you and how grateful I am to you for helping Connie. You say she helped you, but you definitely helped her when she was so ill in Denmark. Mm -hmm. You you were a lifeline for her. So I am very grateful for that. Oh, thank you. And it, it was also my career has been in cooking and it was in, in Denmark is when I started cooking. Oh, that's and amazing. I, started, I, was, I started running the kitchen for the college. And, uh, and that has become 
my whole career. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. It was the, that communal living that we did. And <laughs> I'm glad you took over the cooking. <laughs> I know. I, re I remember one day, I think there were a hundred people in the, in the, the colleges around and we would gather on Friday nights, I think, to eat dinner and everybody got drunk and made speeches and stuff. And I remember <laughs> making souffles for a hundred people. Wow. And um, it is something once I learned how to cook, I never ever would have attempted. And I only did it because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and, um, and, it, and it worked. We did. Well, thank you. And um, thank and, you for doing this. Yes. And this is a wonderful connection, too, because you were a student of hers at Carnegie Mellon, right? Yes. And you came to Denmark um, right. when we were there. So, um, yeah. That's a, that's a beautiful thing to have you be talking to Connie right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Should we go? Stop doing. Yeah. Hi, Megan. Hi. It's Alicia and Dennis. Hi, Alicia. Hi. hi. We just want to say hi to Connie and we'd like hi. to. There's Alicia. <laughs> hi, sweetheart. <laughs> Wonderful tour. Thank you so much. It's just fabulous to hear everyone and we would like to say happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear connie happy birthday to you we love you Happy birthday, you. many more. Yeah. Keep okay, Connie, uh, this is Jerry Campbell from your Swickley time. Yeah. And I have a piece of sculpture that was sculpted from my son Bruce's face when he was 16 years old. Wow. And you took it to Chicago and I went with you and Ann Gwick. Mm -hmm. And then I got the piece of sculpture that is hanging in my front hall in Tucson, Arizona. Wow. wow. I have, I've lost you. I haven't heard from you for about five years or so, but I keep you in my heart. And we are meditation friends from long ago and far away. And the Swickley studio, I went to many, many times. I remember Megan and Brian when they were at Swickley Academy. And we are so happy to see you and much of your life's work. And Megan and her husband, it's a wonderful, wonderful time for us to see you. Bye, Tom. Thank you, Jerry. It's so wonderful to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Connie. It's your old buddy, Sarah. Oh. <laughs> and I just want to wish you a happy birthday. And this is such a wonderful way to celebrate it. Thank you, Megan and Scott. You're welcome, Sarah. And Sarah, you you sit there with Connie in the, the Zen. And sometimes we play music together. Oh, that's right, you do. <laughs> I'm right back here. Okay. Oh, she's there. So do we have any other questions? And anyone who's spoken, if you can um, re-mute yourself, um, that would be helpful. Thank you. Yes, I would like to ask something, but yes. it's more a technical question. I'm Liva Tears. I'm living in Sag Harbor. Yes. And I saw much of Connie's work in the Paris Art and in Guildhall and in books. But I'm thinking about her earlier abstract work, which is very fascinating to look at, very intense, and many different worlds of creativity go in it. So my question was, when I see that, it's overwhelming. 
how did she decide and when does she decide to end that work and start another one? <laughs> Is possible to answer that? Thank you and happy birthday. <laughs> do you have a do you have an idea of how to oh. answer the question of how you end a work and begin a new one? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> Usually, you know. <laughs> I, I want to add something to that because um, one of the paintings in the in the show uh, at the Heckscher uh, is owned by uh, April Gornick and Eric Fischel. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and Eric uh, wrote to me and he said, you know, I've been looking at that <laughs> and the two of us look at it and we say, how did she make that decision? Yes. That was the thing. Yes. And also he said he'd been looking at it for three years and all of a yes. sudden he saw yes. a dragonfly. <laughs> but it took him three years to see that. <laughs> you know, they are very, very different from her drawings of yes. herself in charcoal, which are absolutely stunning, minimal, and so expressive. I've never seen anything like it. Yes. So I'm uh, amazed with the other abstract world where she goes on and on putting another part of her world into it. And yes. that's where the question came up. I, well, you know, it's wonderful having grown up and I think Brian probably could comment on this too. My yeah. brother is here um, mm -hmm. of watching her and, you know, when she, I especially remember in uh, Berkeley when I was little and just lying on the floor of her studio while she painted and she would put on jazz. And um, so through the years, just being around her while she was painting, and it was this um, process of, of always working on it, always, you know, coming in and seeing where it was and working on this area then in relation to another area and she was always um uh working like just feeling did it work did this part work with that part mm -hmm. and when she would add a color then it would shift and make another part need to mm -hmm. shift and make a change mm -hmm. so um you know it was that it's it was like when she was in the process she was in the process it mm -hmm. wasn't uh, an outside process. It was no, an understand. inner process yes. of the painting evolving through yes. those, all those different changes. And yes. obviously she also brings in visual imagery from yes. other places. And, yes. um, and so then that, that gets woven into it. Yes. Um, and I, then she started using iridescent paints at a certain point. And, uh, and then that brought in a whole nother element. Um, so it's really that uh, like, and I have a little video of her painting uh, just a couple of days ago and I was watching her with her brush strokes and she's got that, you know, it's just in her that, mm -hmm. you know, how to make that brush stroke and then get the next color and what happens you know it's it's gestural and it's um it's also uh it, the what she's evolved over these decades is this amazing relationship to the plane of the painting mm -hmm. and the um her relationship to color that's another mm -hmm. big part of it and the texture like mm -hmm. you know you've seen her paintings and you can just look at one little area and just explore that one little yes. area and then move yes. to another area and yeah yes yes thank you very interesting You're welcome it reminds me of that wonderful thing that connie said which is that when she went to the studio first thing in the morning she would peek in to see what the painting had done to itself <laughs> <laughs> beautiful thank you <laughs> Well, she um, should have an exhibition of her charcoal drawings. That alone is so different. They are magnificent, very expressive, 
very creative. They are unique, really. Yes. Anyways, you're, anyways. I think you're thinking of the 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 self as series. Yes, correct. Yes, that was at yes. the parish. Yes. 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 Yeah, we had a little glimpse of those. Yes. Self is so much. I won't say anything anymore. <laughs> we also have uh, four um, weeds drawings on view at the Hecture. Uh, so for those of you who are um, in the area and haven't seen the, the drawings, which we didn't look so much at today, uh, you can come to the museum and see them there. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if there are any last questions for Connie and Megan and Scott, or if we should um, let them get on with Connie's birthday. <laughs> well, one real quick uh, note. This is from uh, coming from Fowler, Colorado, uh, Connie's birthplace. I'm her, uh, her nephew. And uh, 33 years ago, she had painted a painting uh, for Sherry and myself as a wedding gift. And uh, not 33 years to the date, but I... Uh, coming up 33 years and uh, as it stood we had it hanging in our house we still do in a different house now but uh, I I studied it every day and it always was something different and so I looked at that painting and it all came together for me and I said I called Connie I was it was like a revelation of what I thought was uh, <laughs> my revelation and I told her I could see the pews and the altar and I could see the church. And, uh, and that it looked like that exactly to me. She goes, I've never painted a church. So I'm like, I need to start all over again. On my <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting. It's so fun, though, to see what comes out for different uh, perspectives, for different people, for what's there and what you can see. And it's sort of like Connie peeking in her studio, which I've been in a number of times over a lot of years. And uh, that probably is something new and different and exciting every day. So That's kudos to Connie. Yeah. And, uh, and we're very pleased to be having a, this celebration for a, a, a very uh, glorious 96th, uh, 96th uh, happy birthday party so. yes <laughs> and on the back it's it was in 1981 it was given to us in christmas in 1990 and its title is amalfi oh ah, ah, okay mm. yeah yes the amalfi coast <laughs> and there's a wonderful comment here from alexis bruce and uh she says the painting tells her when it's finished i've heard her say mm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yes, because there are different stages when something resolves. But for me, the question was, she goes on to another painting in it, another one. Mm -hmm. So is there a moment that she says, this is it? <laughs> I wonder. Well, she goes back and works on paint. She gets them out and works on them again. So yes, yes, obviously. Thank you. Fluid artwork. May again? Yes. I, it's Ellen again. I wanted, I don't know if this is the time to mention it or not. Um, I, I want to say there's an aspect to Connie in addition to the art, and maybe it goes hand in hand, that's about love and generosity and friendship. So that when I moved to the community and had a brand new baby, Connie and Bill came over and brought this gund, uh, giant teddy bear. They didn't know me, didn't know the baby and brought this gund teddy bear, white. And I want to say that there's that opening and that welcoming of the heart is in the painting and it's in the person. Yeah. So what a blessing you are in the world, Connie. And thank you to you, Megan and Scott and to Heckscher. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much to the Heckscher and to Carly. You've done an amazing job and it, it would be wonderful um, if anyone has a chance to go visit the exhibit. Scott and I went to visit and it's just so 
beautifully um, articulated the, the hanging of the paintings and, and um, all of the descriptions uh, on the plaques related to the paintings. So um, thank you so much, Carly and Joy and the Heckscher. Absolutely. Thank you. It was it was an honor to work on the show. And, um, you know, in this unprecedented time that we're all living through, um, really a special experience to be able to stand in a museum and look at paintings right now. And so I'll just mention that we are, we have very strict um, health protocols in place. We have very limited, we're at 12 people right now per time slot. So um, you can, you know, if you would like to visit the museum, you can um, feel certain that you'll be able to socially distance and that you won't be in a crowd. Um, so we would love to have you. And if you can't join us in person, many of the paintings are on view on the Heckscher's website. Um, we also have a great video of Connie that her um, grandchildren put together. You can see that there. Um, and there also is a, um, some writing there that uh, artists did in honor of Connie and in honor of the show. Um, so artist Audrey Flack, who's joining us this afternoon, she wrote about her memories and experiences with Connie. Um, artist April Gornick, who was mentioned, wrote about uh, the painting that she owns. Um, and our, also artist Linda Banglis wrote about owning Connie's drawings. So it's a really, um, special collection of writing. And so you can read that on the internet also. And also anyone who wants to get in touch, um, I can mail you one because it's really beautifully put together. It's some yes. reproductions. It's nice physically too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah really well done. And yeah. Connie loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we should say thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the tour. Thank you, everyone, for being here. A wonderful um, afternoon. Fantastic. And happy birthday again to Connie. Okay. Thanks, Megan and Scott. That's been great. Connie, thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here. Fun today. Uh, it was it was wonderful that you chose wonderful paintings to arrange for us and give us great insight into the artwork that we hadn't seen prior to to looking at the Sammy's Beach series and um, and the addition of your readings was um, just really perfect and really added a great dimension to the afternoon. So thank you both. Yeah, You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, bye Connie. Bye everybody. Bye. 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 bye.